Mosaicing a terracotta pot with a broken plate sounds really easy. To do it well though, there are a couple little tricks that are going to make a huge difference. In this upcoming tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this, so stay tuned. you're going to need today are pretty simple. You're going to need a pair of straight edge nippers. Now these are straight edge, you can tell because the edge is straight, there's not a curve on them. If you use a curved edge, you're going to get a curved cut on your tiles. So these straight edge nippers are going to be wonderful. These are compound nippers. I like using compound nippers. So any um, squeeze that I put here is doubled at the top. So it gives me a lot more cutting strength without having to use my hands so much. That's a really good bonus. You can use other single fulcrum or single hinged tile nippers. They will work just as well. But for my hands, because I do a lot of mosaics, the compound nippers are my go-to. Right, now the pot, the um, plate that I have here is a terracotta one. It is not overly tough to cut. If you're using porcelain, you might find that a bit difficult. So you might need these tile nippers. These are round edged tile nippers. They are generally used for glass, but porcelain is like glass, so these will make it easier. They are a simple fulcrum um, and you do need a little bit of strength, but if you're using uh, China, these are the way to go. So there you are. I'm going to cut this tile, this plate, and I'm going to show you how I do it so I don't get pieces everywhere and I can keep this border going nicely around. So let's get started. Now with me also, I do have some tape and this tape, I will show you how I'm going to use. So um, you will see the little tricks of the tray. I've got this on a board and there's a reason I've got it on a board so you can see why. When I'm going to cut this plate, I'm going to put a cut through. So I'm just going to nip the edge and it's going to shatter somewhere. I'm not too sure where it's going to shatter, but I'm going to keep it on here. I'm not going to hold it in my hand and I'm just going to let it do what it needs to do. So wait and see. So I've just snapped it and it's cut into two parts like that. So basically what's happened, if we have a look underneath, it's cut around the base of that. It's a Moroccan plate, it's done in terracotta, and it's cut around that foot, thrown foot of that plate. So I'm going to now just use this part of the plate. Now, when cutting this, I don't want to lose the pattern of that border because that pattern of the border is going to go around the tiles here. So we want to keep that pattern. When I'm nipping the edges, I'm going to just do it slowly and methodically. I'm not going to go nuts and put a hammer to this. So I'm just going to put that there just on the edge. It doesn't have to be all the way over and you can't because this tile nip it won't allow me to go any further so I'm just going to hold it and snap so it's snapped I haven't got a brilliant cut it's actually um, cut on an angle there you can see that it's cut on an angle but that's okay so I'm just going to put this one to the side now I'm going to continue to cut around tile nip is on the edge and Keep that in place. Do not move it around, just leave it in place. There. And snap. So I'm putting that back where that design is and putting that there. So that's cut around there. Let's have a look at our tiles. Is that the same size? Roughly it is. Now I'm going to go around and continue to cut. So I can get three sizes through here. Remember, I'm keeping that pattern and moving that. Now, the reason I've got it on the board is that I can move my board around so I don't lose the pattern of my plate as I'm working. And that's cut. Now, these are too long through here, as you can see. 
And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to cut these edges off. So I've got these through here. Now what I am going to do is so I don't mess it up. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape. Now by putting the tape there, it means that I'm not gonna mess it up in case I knock it or the dog comes over and he knocks it. I've still got my pattern the way I like it. I've got my marker and my marker's just going to mark where I want to get my cut happening. So I've just got that mark there. And I'm going to just, now I have rotated that. Everything's back in place so you remember where it goes. And we're just going to put that over and snap. Now I've put that back exactly where I found it. And another piece of tape. Next one, I'm going to just mark and cut that across. So away I go again, turning it around so I remember where it goes. And this is where you've got to work out which way the nippers are going to knit best. So that's best and cut across. Now remember, I'm keeping that intact and I'm keeping that in line. Taping this down so I don't lose the pattern. And my last piece, now, the other thing about taping this is I'm going to tape my smaller piece that I did here. So that now is still part of the pattern. And that goes there. And that's actually now taped to that. So I still have that pattern if I want to use it as a pattern. Now I'm going to mark again. So always remember to use your texture so you can mark, you know where you're going. Get your nippers. I can't get it into that side very easily. So I'm going to go to the other side and cut. And I'm holding these tiles in my hands so they don't splay everywhere. Snapped, put that back. So I know where that goes, that goes there, and this goes here. So I'm just going to tape that back. Everything is taped, nothing gets lost. Remember to tape this as well. Let's put this to the side. I don't need it yet, because I'm just using my border. Because I've got it taped, it means that I can put it away and it's not going to be an issue now. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up all the little scraps that are on the table. In doing that, I'm just going to brush those to the side. I actually don't like a brush. I prefer the ruler. That keeps um, any dust shards from coming up and flicking into my eyes. Even though I've got glasses, I do want to be careful. Now, the interesting thing about this design is that it is on a curve. It's actually not sitting straight you can see that it's not sitting straight so if I'm going to use that like that on my terracotta pot it will not sit nicely so what I need to do now is I need to cut them into straight squares so I'm going to move this closer and we'll talk about that in a minute let's go this is not straight it's on a curve and it's not going to fit let's get my terracotta pot <laughs> It's a huge terracotta pot. And you can see, you can see on the edge of this terracotta pot that this tile is actually going up around the edge. It's not actually sitting flush, which is what I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this bit off and cut that at a right angle to this corner here. I'll take it out. Take that there, hold it, because we want to keep these pieces around for our border, just in case we need them again. Now I've got a nice straight tile. I can trim up that edge because as you can see, it's not quite straight. We've got a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit. And now we have a pretty straight cut. So that's pretty straight through there. 
a little bit curved there, but that's okay. So I'm going to do the same with all of these tiles. So I've got that sitting there now. So that's a continuation. Let's take the sticky tape off this. And as you can see, it's not a rigid digi it's not a heavy duty sticky tape. It's just a simple sticky tape, keeping that in line so I know the pattern that I'm creating. I'm not getting messed up. Need to create a straight line through here. I'm not going to mark it with my ruler. I'm just going to eyeball this. So I'm going to tidy that up. And this side is not very straight. So you can see that gap in between, it's quite large. And if I was going to glue it, it would become larger. So I'm going to cut that, this bit off here. So this bit is going to be cut off. That's sitting better now. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. If I start cutting off too much, I'll end up losing a lot of my pattern, but I've still got my pattern happening. So that's great. And I'm going to stick those two together. The next tile, peel back. organized onto my um, pillow. The pillow's covered with plastic, so if it gets dirty, it's going to be easier to clean. I have my tiles ready to go. They're all in their nice straight line. They've all been trimmed and they fit beautifully onto that tile. I'm going to mix up my tile adhesive now. I'm not going to mix up too much and I will be back. The type of glue you use is really important. Also, you need a weatherproof tile adhesive, which means that it's not going to come apart because this terracotta pot is going to be immersed in water. It won't be immersed in water per se, but it's going to be wet because you're going to be watering your plants. So make sure the tile adhesive that you use is okay for water features. The adhesive that I'm going to be using is Tile All. There's going to be a picture of it in a minute so you can see it. It's from Bunnings here in Australia. I use it because it's easy to purchase and it's easy to mix up. It's a two part. Now, the other thing I like to do when I am using adhesive, especially a waterproof adhesive, which is permanent, I have a sponge here and that's so I can clean my fingers if I get anything on my fingers. I also have a damp towel just to dry off the last of it. So I've got two pieces of, um, I have these by my side. So while I'm working, it means that I don't get any glue on my tiles. Now I'm going to put the, um, the tiles that I've got ready to go just by the side here and I'm going to peel them off one at a time. I could put this in a baggie but with this particular method what I want to do is place the adhesive onto my tile and then just jiggle it down and I'll explain why. Now, this optima is really, really important. The back of this tile is glazed, so it's not porous. So effectively, it's a piece of glass. So this tile or tiles anything onto any surface, that's what it says. So that's going to be ideal. I'm going to butter this on. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I'm going to give it a good layer. The reason I'm going to put a lot on is when we look at the tile, it's actually not straight. It's got a slight curve into it. So I'm going to put on more glue than I require. When I place this down, I'm going to give it a bit of a jiggle. And in jiggling that, so when I did that, there was some glue that oozed out. 
and in jiggling that around it's now stuck down so I haven't pressed it down I've just given it a slight jiggle that glue has oozed out when it's a little bit firmer I can then clean that up and we'll be good to go the other nice thing is that the Optima will stand up on a vertical surface and it won't slump down on tiles that are not too heavy. If it was a really heavy tile, yes, it might slump down. But this Optima, um, this tile oil is really, really good because it will hold on a vertical surface. However, I like to work on a flat surface when I'm doing this because I don't want to look... Um, yeah, terracotta pots are really quite hard because they're going on that sort of angle. So having it on the side is easier to work with. The other thing you need to do before it dries too much in about 15 minutes, come back and just check to make sure that you have got all the glue off the side. So as I've been working, I actually have been getting out some of the glue that was oozing out from the top and around the sides. So make sure you do that before it dries. If it cures, it's too hard to do. So do this now and remember that. Also remember to clean your hands. Keep your hands clean as you go and keep your tongue. That will help to keep your tongue. Bye. Go say bye-bye. That's it. Yeah, eat your ball. Go on. You eat your ball. Yes. Do we need to do this? Yes, we can. I can do this. Yes, I can. Okay. We can do this. Yes, we can. All right. Let's talk about sealers, sealing your terracotta pot. Do you need to seal it? Most people would say yes, but the reason they're saying yes is their adhesive is not for water immersing. So they need to protect the adhesive they are using from their terracotta pot, from the water that's going to seep through to their tiles. The adhesive that I am going to be using for doing this terracotta pot is water immersible, which means that water can sit in this terracotta pot and it's not going to affect the adhesion of my tiles to my pot. So am I going to seal? No. That's one less job that I have to do.